Hey everybody, and welcome to today's video where we're going to see how we can create a woven bed sheet or any sort of a bed cover or pretty much any uh, sort of a cover. So for this, I'm actually going to be using 3ds Max and uh, a little bit of uh, Marvelous Designer later on. So let's start off with uh, 3ds Max. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go all over in my top viewport and in here I'm going to create one circle. Now the size of the circle at the moment is really not that important, mainly because uh, later on we are going to rescale this thing. So, so far I have the circle, I'm going to uh, right click and convert it to an little spline. Select my uh, interpolation and reduce the number of steps that we have here to something like two. So it's going to be easier to work with. Now, next thing that I want to do is select my bottom vertex, right click and go to break. Uh, either this or we can just select it and hit on the break option over here. What this is going to do is going to separate both of these vertices. So now we have two of them. All right, so once we have that, I'm going to move this thing downwards like so. Zoom into it. And now I want to add in a few more. Just move this thing upwards, just a tiny bit like that. And with the refine, I want to add in one more vertex over here. Now, what I'm gonna do is select uh, this vertex and this one, where I can just uh, select this one and work on half of this. So let's do that. So delete this because uh, since this is going to be symmetrical, I will create just one half of it. So I'm going to click here and rise, uh, make this thing rise up a bit like so over here and move this thing to this side. In a second, you're going to get the idea as to why I'm moving it and making it like this. So I'm going to rotate it around. So it's something like this. All right, now I'm going to put on the rendering in the viewport like this. Give it a thickness so we have uh, something to work with. In this case, uh, this is a rather large uh, piece, but it's OK. I should probably scale it down a bit. But like I said, later on, we're going to rescale everything. So for now, we just want to make it visually uh, more or less like the size that we want it to be at. All right, so once we have this, what I'm going to do is uh, hit Edit Poly, select, or before I actually go and do the Edit Poly, what I can do is uh, do a little bit of refinement to this thing. So I'm going to select this, right click and make it smooth. So we get a better transition. Right click over here, make this smooth as well. And there we go. Now it's a much more fluid uh, look. All right, now to, uh, put on the edit poly, remove the cap over here. Or what I can do, instead of uh, deleting this thing, I can just move it a bit like so. And now put a symmetry modifier on top of here. And we get something like this. Now, once we get to this point, uh, another thing that I want to do is select this edge over here, or well, not the edge, the, the polygons, and delete them. Select the border and make it planar on the X. Just move it so we get a better transition like that. Now, whatever we do on this side is going to translate well on the other side. Now, another thing that I would like to mention is uh, while I'm going to be recording this tutorial, I'm going to be saving quite frequently. And if you're going to be doing something similar to this, I would advise you to do the same thing as well, because Max loves to crash when you're working with geometry that's going to be similar to what we are doing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just control an S and save this thing. With this thing saved, uh, next thing I want to do is I'm going to hold on shift and drag out one copy on the Y. I want to drag it to about here and make it an instance. Now, the reason for making this thing an instance is that now that we just drew this thing out here, what I can do is I can go in uh, here and manually 
just go into the edible spline as we have it here and move these vertices around so we get no clipping like this move this thing upwards like so all right so now we no longer have any clipping turn on the show uh, end result and we have something like this and more or less this is what we want to have so i'm going to delete this thing or actually i can leave it and just make it unique and now here's the thing i want to have a weave that's going to be basically something similar to what we see here so for now i'm just going to delete this and what i want to have is something similar to this so let's say we have like five copies or more and you have uh, the way that this geometry is going to flow upwards but now we also need to have geometry that is going to be on the corners now creating this thing on the corners is not really that hard all we got to do in here is just put on an edit poly on top of this thing make this thing uh, unique and now with the edit poly attach both of these together and just select both of those uh, edges hold on shift and drag it out like so with that dra uh, drag selection hold on control and press the polygon and detach this you can detach it either as a clone or as an object really doesn't matter because now once we have this thing finished we can just delete the edit poly modifier and we are left with these two pieces now these are on the perfect uh, place where this thing is supposed to connect. So what we want to do here is now just create one more segment, rotate this thing 90 degrees. There we go, move it around here. Again, 90 degrees, move it in here. We can bridge this to, uh, together so we get something like this. So now what I want to do with those two selections is uh, give it a bit more uh, geometry. So a chamfer would do well for this thing. And even though we have this very unnatural uh, cut, what we can do here to get a more smooth uh, result is we can select this uh, edge, open up our modeling ribbon. And inside the modeling, we have this set flow. When we click this thing, it's going to average out the distance between the two neighboring edges and it's going to give us a really smoother result. So set flow will help us in here so we get a much smoother flow for this thing. Select these guys, set flow, set flow. And now if we want to add in more geometry, we can just go in here with a swift loop, hold down shift while you're adding in the swift loops and you get a much smoother result but since we will be using uh, turbo smooth I'm actually gonna leave it like this All right so we have the corner now piece and we have the uh, main piece now before I do anything else we need to ask ourselves are we going to be using any textures for this or are we going to be using this strictly for geometry if we're going to be adding in any textures what we want to do is actually deal with the unwrap at the moment while it's still a very simple geometry if we're going to be just using this for thing for uh well just for uh, geometry wise and not really care about how what sort of texture we put on it we, we can skip this but let's just go ahead and select individually both of these items uh, first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to apply a texture to it so I'm going to go ahead and open up my material editor and just apply this uh, texture that I have here. And if I set show uh, in material viewport, you're going to see that it's showing it up as a yellow. So it's really not showing me anything. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to clear my UVW mapping on this thing. And now I'm going to put a unwrap UVW modifier on it. Once we put this thing, what it's going to do, it's going to apply a pr uh, planar projection and it's going to work on some places, but some places are going to be very stretched. So we want to unwrap this thing. Uh, this is actually pretty easy to do. All you have to do, since uh, we have uh, the edges capped off, 
just go on the underside of this thing, select this edge going all across here, and convert it to a seam. With this thing done, uh, what we want to do is select all the polygons and just hit the peel mode. What the peel mode is going to do is going to take our entire uh, model and basically stretch it out. Now we can try and do a bit of relax or you can just go into the custom and hit the relax button. But what we are actually going to be stuck with is something like this. So no straight corners and this can be uh, rather problematic when you're baking some, something like this because you're going to get some real uh, stretches in the texture. So what we want to do here when you actually have something like this, it's uh, quite easy to fix this. I'm just going to make this thing bigger so you can see it better. So what you want to do is you go over here and select the, whoops, before you start selecting anything, turn off the peel mode. Now, double click here on this entire edge. We'll make that uh, loop selection. You have this button over here that says align horizontally to pivot. I have this thing uh, key mapped on my uh, keyboard as a shortcut. So now select the bottom one. Again, uh, make this thing align horizontally to pivot and go all all of, over these uh, edges. Now in this case it's really not that uh, uh, important and it's not a major requirement to do this because I don't think uh, the texture is going to be really uh, stretched on this model or be visible since this is actually woven but it's a good practice to actually be doing this. If not in the interior ones, the edge ones so the green lines should be straight. For the horizontal ones, you're going to be using align horizontal with the pivot. For the vertical ones, you're going to use the under uh, the button underneath that or align vertically to pivot. So I'm going to go over here, just select all of these and make them vertical. All right, I'm just going to do this quickly and I'll be back as soon as I just do this. And there we go. It took just a few more minutes, but I have almost all of them straight like so. All right, so as you can see, now it's a very, very straight selection and everything is uh, more or less perfect. So I'm gonna close this thing. As you can see, now this unwrap is perfect for this piece. So next thing that I'm gonna do is start saving before I do anything else, because this is where usually Max would like to crash. And the reason why it's gonna crash, I'm gonna tell you as soon as it does crash, so I'm, I'm about uh, 80 or 90 percent sure that we're going to get some crashes and that's why I'm, I like I said I'm going to be saving this and I'm going to explain why it's crashing and how you can avoid it. All right so I'm going to do the same thing over here like we uh, did here just select that underlying edge convert to seams to uh, selection select everything make it into peel mode relax it like so, turn off the peel mode and just straighten out all the edges again. All right, I'm gonna just pause here, do this thing and I'll be back in a second. All right, as you can see, this one is straight as well. As And also another thing as you can notice is that uh, the distribution of the dex textile density is not the same for both of these. So in order to make that thing uh, the same, what we can do is select both of them, apply a new unwrap UVW, open up the UV editor, and with both of them selected, you go down here to rescale elements and back them custom, like so. There we go. So now they both have the same textile density. All right, so I'm gonna right click, convert to an edible poly. And now both of these are separate pieces with collapsed uh, stacks. And now here's the part where it can get crashy with Max. What I'm gonna do is select my uh, piece over here and I wanna make some copies that are gonna be going in the Y uh, axis. So just so I know exactly where this thing is going to be uh, copying to, I'm going to use snapping. So I'm going to turn on my snap. There we go. And go from here 
to here. I want to have, uh, in this case, if I go with instances, this is usually where Max crashes. When you make instances off from uh, a piece of geometry that ha that's sharing the same UV space, for some reason, at least Max 2017 crashes quite a lot. So what I'm going to do is make, uh, make it a copy. And what I'm going to do here is go in and put input 100 copies of this thing. So I'm going to click OK. And like so, we're going to get uh, this. And also, before I do anything else, like I said, I'm going to save and select all of these copies and isolate them like so. So without just the corner ones. Now, what we want to do here is we want to preserve the UVs. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is select all of them, put an unwrap UVW on top of them, and open up the UV editor. What you're going to notice right away is that even though we have 100 copies, they're all sharing the same UVW space. So in this case, this can stay like this, but it can cause some issues later on with the texture because it's going to be repeatable. So what we want to do here is now we're going to just uh, go down here. We don't have to rescale because this is the same size, but we want to click on the pack custom. What this is going to take is going to take uh, all of those 100 elements and give them their own space like so. All right. And now we just want to convert this to an little poly. And hopefully now when we go ahead and attach all of them together, they don't crash. Let's see. All right. So far, so good. This thing did not crash and we still have uh, their individual UVs. Now we're going to do the same thing with uh, this piece. But since we created 100 copies of this and this one goes uh, over one of them, so we don't have to make 100. Instead, we're going to be uh, creating 50 copies of this thing. So we're going to snap this thing from here to here. Just make sure it's the right one. Make 50 copies. Click OK. Yep. And there we go. The first crash. All right. I'll restart and be back in a second. All right. So after the first crash, I actually, like I said, I'm going to be saving before I do any of these steps because I've known that Max is going to pretty much do this thing. And the reason in this case why Max crashed is whenever you're uh, copying something like this in multiple versions and you mess up like here, it snap to another thing. I press Control Z to undo that action. And that is usually when Max will crash. So if you undo the, um, the copying, just know that Max doesn't like that and will probably crash. So in this case, let's try to be more accurate. Put in another 50 copies. All right, so with this, we're gonna be more or less to about where we should be. And I think in here we are missing just one more link, but we're gonna fix that later on. All right, so now I'm gonna hide this thing so hide the previous selection, get all of these, save before I do anything else. And now let's do the same thing we did with the previous one. UV unwrap on top of it, open up the UV editor, select all of them and just back them up together like, like that. All right, awesome. Now, Select again all of them, right click convert to an edible poly, and attach them all together, like so. All right, so basically, what we have here, so I'm not everything, what we have here is we have our a mid part and we have our edge part, and honestly. I just want to get one more up on the right, so, oh yeah we can just take one from here 
move it to about there. Clone to an object. Just so I know that I'm 100% sure that I don't have to uh, fix this thing later on. So just make sure it's snapped like that. Attach it over here. And every time you're changing your geometry, put on a new unwrap. Open up the UV editor, select everything and repack it together like that. There we go. Convert to a little poly. All right. So once we have this thing done, now we want, uh, we have the length and we have the edge for the weave. We just need the mid part and we can put on the, the edge as a mirrored uh, copy on this side. Now this part again here is where you might want to save because well, Max has been known to crash at this checkpoint as well. All right, so click here and just drag it outwards to about there like that. And let's put in 50 copies here as well. Click OK. Let's just make sure everything is Yeah, see, this is the problem. Now, if I go ahead and undo this thing, I'm 100% sure that max will crash. So I'm just gonna go in and manually select all of this thing and delete just so I don't have to deal with max crashing on me again. And with this sort of a selection, it's kind of a pain to get it to snap right. All right, so let's try one more time. So from here, make sure it snaps right there. 50 copies, click OK, zoom in. Yeah, we see, now we have the perfect. All right, awesome. Select everything, deselect the uh, uh, corners and isolate them. Uh, Alt and Q will uh, enter isolation mode. Now save again. And before I do anything else, what I'm gonna try to do here is go on a unwrap a UVW map. In this case, since now it's starting to be a very dense mesh, it might take a while. Open up the UV editor and again, select all the polygons in here. Just give it a second. Generally, Max is not the most reliable program when it comes down to unwrapping. But in this case, when we have so much geometry in here and all of it, all of these pieces have their individual uh, UV islands or uh, individual place in their uh, in the one zero to one UV space, it can be really slow. So control A to select all the polygons in here. And hopefully Max does not crash like that. And there we go. Scroll down and click on the pack custom. This will give them all individual uh, space in the uh, texture. And when the packing is finished, uh, everything is going to have an individual or unique place in the texture. So now I can close this thing. And before Max tries to do anything else, I'm actually going to go ahead and try to save as soon as I can actually select anything. With this, I'm going to right click convert to an edible poly, which will remove the UV unwrap. There we go. And now you can see that we have this uh, <laughs> very interesting coloring, but don't worry, that's because the texture is not tiled enough because now all of these are very small. So if we go into the material editor and in, we increase the, the actual texture, because this is the image like here, if we increase the tiling to like, let's try it 10 by 10, we're gonna notice that we have all of those numbers going right. All right, so close. Now, 
we want to select the first one, go attach, attach all of these together. So they form one continuous mesh. And once this thing is uh, attached, what we want to do is make sure that the mid, mid parts where all of these meet are actually welded together. So go into the vertex mode, control A to select all the vertices, in, go inside the weld with a very, very small amount. Just click one or 0 0.1. And you see that we go from 1,186,000 to 1,112,000. So, okay. And remove. So now this is just one continuous mesh without any uh, cuts over here. And with this, I'm going to add to the isolate, select this piece on this side, mirror it as a copy, and then move this thing all across on this side and just snap it back together. Make sure that you are snapping just on the X axis. There we go, something like this. And we have our woven uh, rug or pretty much anything that you might wanna be using this thing for, like so. Now the corner pieces have a different uh, textile density uh, uh, than this thing. So what I'm gonna do is select this piece, attach it to this side here, put an unwrap UVW on both of them. With this selected, just click uh, back custom like that. And now what we want to do is select our uh, original Piece or the mid piece and our corner piece and put an additional unwrap. Now in this case, I should probably again save because this thing can crash. So open up the UV editor and now this thing should be slow because it's going to have a lot of information coming from the mid piece as, as well as the corner piece. So I'm going to try to uh, zoom out a bit with the polygon selection, I wanna to try to select everything. And again, once we have everything selected, go down and pack them together as all of them individually are selected. So back custom. And now once Max is finished with the entire calculations for the UVs, we should end up with uh, the same textile density for the corners as well as the mid parts. And a few more minutes later, I think Max is crashing again. So I'm gonna try to do this thing again off camera and as soon as I'm actually successful, I'll be right back with you guys and we can continue the video. All right. And once we're back, well, the only thing that I did is I took the mid parts and I uh, attached them with the corner ones. I applied a different material to it. So it's a one uh, color material so we can see it better. And now we have this thing as a base that we can uh, work on and make it def deform to whatever the, we want it to. And in the next video, I'm actually going to show you how to do that when you have either a model that you bought off the internet or a model that you made it on your own in either 3ds Max or Marvel Designer. So I hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something uh, in this rather lengthy video. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will meet you in the comment section of the video. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.